Sean King does some of the very best reporting in this country. Uh, he's uh, over the New York Daily News. And uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure I retweeted this thing. If I didn't, I certainly should have. Um, I'm looking. <laughs> in any case, uh, if I didn't, I will. Uh, but the article is in the today's New York Daily News, or yesterday's New York Daily News. Um, uh, the headline is King, Huckabee's false Facebook post undermines real hate crimes. The King being Sean King, the author. And he talks about how, you know, Mike Huckabee is doing the, the, the Fox News thing, right? Uh, eight months ago, some time ago, there was a, uh, a chapel at Northwestern University in Chicago that was defaced. It was defaced with uh, swastikas and anti-gay and anti-black slurs and stuff like that. And Huckabee said that the people doing it were, quote, liberal Jewish Northwestern students who were trying to smear Trump and his supporters. So this is a pushback by Huckabee and the the alt-right, basically, you know, the, the, the hard right, the bizarre, the anti-American right, the, the, the right that, you know, the, the Confederate right. Keep in mind, the Confederacy, that flag is a flag of treason. They committed treason against the United States. They staged an armed rebellion. 600,000 people died. It's the flag of treason. So it is the... The, an effort by these the, the, these traitors and wannabe traitors and, 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 and their buddies like Mike Huckabee to try to basically reinvent history or reinvent news. So the story that was tweeted by Mike or posted on Facebook by Mike Huckabee to his two million Facebook followers that just went everywhere all over the internet. In our Everything You Know is Wrong department, liberals went ballistic after someone defaced the chapel at Northwestern University in Chicago using spray paint to deface photos of Muslim students, draw swastikas, and write slurs against blacks and gays, and of course the name Trump. Can you believe what those evil, racist, homophobic, Islamophobic deplorables who support Trump did? Well, actually, they did nothing. Video cameras, this is not Scott King, this is not Sean King, this is, the, this is what Huckabee retweeted. Well, actually, or I mean, post on Facebook, excuse me. Well, actually, they did nothing. Video cameras caught the vandals who've confessed to the hate crimes. They're two liberal Jewish Northwestern students who were trying to smear Trump and his supporters. So kind of looks like case closed, right? In fact, you know, it goes on to say, uh, well, let me go back to Sean King. So Sean King then writes in, in uh, to yesterday's New York Daily News, yeah, yesterday's Daily News. Again, this incident took place eight months ago, and the students were charged with actual hate crimes. It did not happen in response to Donald Trump's victory. It's not what liberals are doing, number one. And number two, Huckabee, I'm quoting Sean King here, Huckabee identified the suspects as liberal Jewish Northern, Northwestern students who were trying to smear Trump and his supporters. The problem, the actual incident happened eight months ago. This past March, two Northwestern University students did this. Their names were Anthony Morales and Matthew Kafner, Kafker. They were caught on camera. They were charged with a series of hate crimes. They were expelled. They could go to prison. And not a single report on the incident states anywhere that the young men were Jewish. But it was a couple of these, these kind of hokey, semi-legitimate, you know, funded by some, some cranky billionaire someplace so-called conservative news sites, the Tribune and the Gateway Pundit, and they're, it's, it's called self-referential. It's, it's like, you know, they, they refer to each other. You know, one of them said, oh, these kids were, judged. and it, it turns out not the case. Meanwhile, hate, hate crimes across the country are exploding as a result of the election of Donald Trump. And, and, the, and the hate crimes are being committed by Trump's supporters who are trashing Muslims, who are going after people of color, who are going after gay people. Um, on and on it goes. Which leads us to the Japanese internment camps. 
Carl Higby has been a guest on this program many times. If you go to youtube.com slash Tom Hartman and plug in his name, H-I-G-B-I-E, Carl Higby, uh, you'll find at least four, in just the last year, times that I have debated Carl on this program. He is an outspoken and proud right-wing conservative. He's, the author, he's a former Navy SEAL. He's the author of a book about that. And he went on Fox News a day or three ago and said, uh, you know, we should have a registry of Muslims in this country or people who, and people who came here from Muslim countries. And the Fox News host was like, really? And he was like, yeah, there's a precedent for it. Franklin Roosevelt did this with Japanese in World War II. Let that sink in for a minute. In, uh, in the Korematsu case, the Supreme Court actually upheld at least the registry part. And the court decision says explicitly the other issues, you know, whether they could be held in the detention camps, was not the case brought before the court. Um, and so we're not ruling on that. So, you know, putting them in prison, you could argue that it's been decided by the court, and many do. Uh, certainly, though, the court has said, and it still stands, it's okay to have a registry of people based on their national origin. This is, right now, the law in the United States. Carl Higby is arguably right about that. And then meanwhile, Chris Kobach, you know, the guy who, who brought us Senate Bill 1040, I think it was, in Arizona, you know, the, the Your Papers, Please law that created such a furor, and then went to Kansas and became the Secretary of State for Kansas, uh, you know, the, the state where, where one of the Koch brothers lives, where Koch Industries is headquartered, um, and put together Interstate Crosscheck, which Greg Pallas has done such brilliant reporting on, gregpallas.com for the whole story. Chris Kobach, you know, I think is probably more responsible than anybody else other than the Democratic strategists who blew it. But I think, the, you know, who, who failed to turn out the, the, the Obama's people. But, you know, the, 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 in particular, millennials. Uh, but, I, but I think that Chris Kobach is the guy who is claiming, and, and all the Republicans get this, voter suppression won them the, a lot of elections across this country. And that voter suppression was pioneered by Chris Kobach and his interstate cross-check program, throwing millions of people off the rolls, off the voter rolls. And so now here in today's Washington Post, this is in Derek Hawkins' morning mix, a key member of Trump's transition team, Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach, said Trump's policy advisors are weighing whether to send him a formal proposal for a national registry of immigrants and visitors from Muslim countries. This is getting strange. They don't, back in 1942 and ending in 1946, following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. government incarcerated as many as 120,000 people of Japanese descent in internment camps throughout the United States. The majority were U.S. citizens. In 1988, President Ronald Reagan signed a law paying $20,000 in reparations to each surviving detainee. He apologized for the mass internment, calling it a great injustice in American history. But President Reagan did not attempt to go to the Supreme Court and have Korematsu overturned. So, gee, we're really sorry we did that to you, Japanese Americans. And two-thirds of them were actually American citizens born in the United States. The vast majority of them were American citizens, period. But, you know, this is going to be how the Trump administration starts out. It's getting real interesting. It's getting real interesting. Watching all the machinations, all the craziness, and all the jockeying for Donald Trump's ear, because this guy is like... He's like a blank slate in many regards. He has no core principles. He's not like Paul Ryan, who just believes that, you know, screw poor people. You know, we'll be back. This is the Tom Hartman Program. If Chuck Schumer can get to Donald Trump before Mitch McConnell does, this will get real. I, you know, frankly, I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical. We'll see.